We all agree tonight, all of the speakers have agreed that America has a very serious problem. Not only does America have a very serious problem, but our people have a very serious problem. America's problem is in point you have people right now who are hispanic latino just to give an example there are dominicans who are clearly black clearly have african ancestry clearly have african roots yet i'm not black i don't i'm not black i'm hispanic i'm latino i'm dominican i'm this and it's like and you're also black, like why is it hard for you? But because of the anti-blackness and the inferiority complex and the propaganda that whiteness is the best and the most intelligent and the most beautiful and the most righteous, hello, I'm the color of day. I am bold beauty. And then anything associated with black, brown, African, indigenous, that's nasty, hell, beneath us. So like I said, people will be dark. Look, people will be dark as my speaker. And ain't nothing wrong with this. Look at that. Ain't nothing wrong with this color. But they'll be dark as the speaker and will sit up and tell you some, I'm not black. I don't have any African ancestry. I don't know what you're talking about. Even though technically, scientifically, genetically, biologically speaking, we are all from the continent of Africa and we can all be traced back. But then to further add in salty injury, people that clearly have African features are out here also participating in the anti-blackness. It's just, you just, to see the delusion, the delusional behavior, and just how deeply ingrained it, hating blackness, hating African, uh, Africanness, hating uh, nativeness, indigenousness, it's just so ingrained, it's sad. Okay, and then on page 33, uh, again, you see the self-hate, uh, you know, the, the page 33, we knew another girl who kept a list of where you never risk meeting another nigger, Parisian dance clubs. And get this, I know black people, brown people, people of color. I know people who will literally sit up and say they only hang out at certain places because they don't want to run into other black folks. <laughs> they don't want to run into other brown people. They don't want to run into other POC, people of color. They don't, but yet they are black. They are brown. They are people of color. Again, then you have classism that also interwines. You got the classism, the colorism, the anti-blackness, the racism, the white supremacy. It's layers to oppression, honey. It's like an onion. You just keep pulling shit back, peel, peeling shit back, and you're just like, this is horrifying. So then, in the middle of page 33, we're gonna read this a little bit. Let's see if we can read it together so everybody, because I told y'all I want y'all to see this. Describing the phenomenon of self-withdrawal, Anna Freud writes, as a method of avoiding pain, ego restriction, like, the various forms of denial does not come under the heading of the, psycholo the psychology of neurosis, but is a normal stage in the development of the ego. Your ego is essentially what you think of yourself, but like on a very self-centered <laughs> like setup, right? When the ego is young and plastic, it's beginning stages, its withdrawal from one field of activity is sometimes compensated for by excellence in another, upon which is upon which it concentrates. But when it becomes rigid or has already acquired an intolerance of pain, and so is obsessionally fixated to a method of flight, such withdrawal is punished by impaired development. By abandoning one position after another, it becomes one-sided, loses too many interests, and can show but a me aggrieved achievement. And this is from Anna Freud, 
the ego and the mechanisms of defense. International Universities Press, New York, 1946, my grandmother was one. So that was 75 years ago, and that's off of page 111. And again, like I told you, he references Freud often. Okay, so you got Sigmund Freud, Anna Freud, often. Again, psychiatrist, psychoanalysis, case study, thesis, dissertation, analytical work of art, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. And then he goes on, when we understand now why the black man cannot take pleasure in his insularity, okay? For him, there is only one way out and it leads to the white world. Hence his constant preoccupation with attracting the white world, his concern with being as powerful as the white man and his determination to acquire the properties of a coding, i.e. the part of being or having that constitutes an ego. This is very deep because a lot of times, this is why when we're talking about the fight for black liberation, a lot of time it doesn't appear that that's ever gonna happen because a lot of cisgender heterosexual black men and a lot of cisgender black men and a lot of trans black men and masculine people, but in particular, cisgender heterosexual black men. Are you fighting for black liberation or are you fighting so you can be the next oppressor or so you can do the same as the white man? Because I love how France Fanon saw that in the 1950s, the early 1950s, okay? I'm gonna read it again. We understand now why the black man cannot take pleasure in his insularity. For him, there is only one way out, and it leads to the white world. Hence his constant preoccupation with attracting the white world. His concern with being as powerful as the white man. He's got to get the white woman to prove a point. He's got to be just as masculine, just as aggressive, more violent, more aggressive. He's got to outperform. He's got to have sex with all these women, right? Because it's seen as, well, the white man can sleep with any woman he wants. So again, psychologically, subconsciously, and consciously, it's ingrained. It's propaganda. It's generational trauma, curses, lived on repeat, repeating the same tragic, toxic, dysfunctional, racist, oppressive cycles. And the next question will be asked, are you fighting for black liberation or are you fighting to be as powerful as the white man, to be an oppressor yourself? And especially to my cisgender heterosexual black men, to my cisgender black men, like that's a real question. Because it's like oftentimes we got to fight against white supremacy, racism, and then we also got to fight against you because you are also harming the community, okay? You're harming each other, killing each other. Every time you turn around, you got a new rapper being shot and killed, murdered. You got somebody in your own community. Literally last month, um, rest in peace to my cousin. My cousin was shot and killed in the house while babysitting her 10 month old grandson. Over, what was it? Over 50 shell casings, murdered. I've got so many stories like that, just not only just from my family and my friends, but from the city of Flint, from my community. And so many of us can relate to that. And you know who did it? Another black cisgender man. So again, and then just speaking on a personal level, I was sexually assaulted, molested for an entire year in third grade. By who? A black cisgender man. Okay, and don't get me wrong. Black men get hurt as well. But again, most of the time, it's by another black man. This isn't to say, disclaimer, because you know me, this isn't to say that black women, black feminine people are not abusers and oppressors and aggressors and violent as well. I'm just pointing it out, okay? I thought that was something that I, I, I had to point out in that. What is that? You know, what is the, look at the psychoanalysis of that. That's on page 33, chapter two. Then we switch over to page 34. Black skin, white mass, chapter two, the woman of color and the white man. Let's get into it. Ain't nothing wrong with writing notes. It helps you, you know, jot stuff down. You know, ain't nothing wrong with it. I encourage it. If you don't want to write notes, do an audio. You can record shit. You can record your own thoughts, put it on your phone, bring it to you to the video discussions, to the chat. You feel me? So 34 is really good. I want to read this. The withdrawal of the ego, and this is right at the beginning of 34. The withdrawal of the ego 
as a successful defense mechanism is impossible for the black man. He needs white approval. This right here, child, like I said, has anything really changed? Because oftentimes this is so evident when we're talking about award shows, you know, especially for music and arts and talents and skills, you know, ceremonies, whether that's the Grammys, the Oscars, the Emmys, the American Music Awards, the World Music Awards, the, uh, the MTV Awards, the VMAs, whatever it may be, okay? Every fucking award show, we already know what's about to happen. Black people, brown people, native people, indigenous people, people of color are going to get what? Snubbed. Okay, black folks are going to get what? Snubbed. Okay, I'm still on the fact that Macklemore won, I believe, best rap album. This was like 2013, 2014. Might have been 2015. Jog my memory, drop it down below if you got the exact. I'll have information on it in the description box, but Macklemore won over Kendrick Lamar. And again, this is what I mean by South Pole, North Pole, and the code switching. The, the marginalized, the people of color, the black folks, the brown folks, the indigenous folks. We on the South, we on South Pole doing that. But we know when we intermingle with North Pole, the white society, the white supremacy, the, the superior, right? That's what it's viewed as, that's what it's treated as. These are real life implications, okay? When we intermingle, we know we have to talk their talk, walk their walk, adapt to their way of life. But it's never the same, right? This is where the conflict comes in. Because like I said, they come to, we created hip hop and rap. Hell, we created music <laughs> for the most part, all these different genres. But you know, when we bring that up, oh, no, yeah, blah, 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 blah. but like I said in chapter one, they can sit up and play everybody else's ethnicity. They have rewritten, they have rewrote history over and over and over and over again to make themselves the focal point. But when we actually bring up facts that no, we created this, oh no, you guys are always, you guys are always taking over and blah, blah. When in reality, it's gaslighting, it's deflection. You are the one that's always taking over, stealing, lying, and cheating. Narcissism, 101. But anyways, we get to these uh, these music awards, these ceremonies, and even though we've already have our own, the Soul Train Awards, the Trumpet Awards with the NAACP, the Centric Awards, BET Awards, we have so many of our own shit going on. And I'm always saying, we need to just put our time and energy into our own shit. Instead of sitting up here constantly seeking approval from who? your own fucking oppressors who will never accept us. They have, I'm sorry, but after 400 years, and that's just 400 years in the USA, keep in mind this oppression is a global thing. This has been going on for way more than 400 years, okay? But just in the USA, after 400 years, four fucking centuries, I think it's safe to say they're never going to accept you. So we should focus our time and energy and effort and money and resources into our own shit. But, France Fanon said it damn near 70 years ago. Okay, the withdrawal of the ego as a successful defense mechanism is impossible for the black man. Black people, black folks, brown people, brown folks, people of color, okay? He needs white approval. We are constantly seeking approval. So, it, you know, once we get smug and we get, you know, screwed over in the awards, it's always this cry out the racism, the white supremacy, Oscar so white, Grammy so white, American Music Awards, whitewashed, all this shit, but yet we know this. We've been living through this year after year, <laughs> decade after decade, yet we still sitting up here, but they did, and we knew, and I'm just as good as them, and they who, again, we are constantly seeking approval from our oppressors. And it's just like, it's time to break the chains. That's all I'm saying, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna write this, read this as well. Um, but there is a film, Green Pastures, where God and the angels are black. They gave the author a terrible shock. Quote, how can God be conceived with Negro features? That's not my idea of paradise. But after all, it's only an American film. And now, isn't that some funny shit? How America, you know, again, 
America in the heydays, in the, you know, once we got into the silent films and into the early heydays of Hollywood in the 20s and 30s and 40s, American film, until this day, American film, right? Yet in America, right after Birth of a Nation in 1915, Klansmen as senators, Congress folks, as you can see today, ain't nothing changed. Racist, white supremacist bigots in positions of power. Yet they got a whole uh, Hollywood film <laughs> with a black god and black angels. And here they are in France, <laughs> in Europe. And uh, it's like, wait a minute, how can a god be conceived of Negro features? That's not my idea of paradise. After all, it's only an American film. It's, it's mind boggling. It's the shit that, you know, I, I, I pull from it. Again, we're also, I'm gonna say again, we're constantly seeking approval from the oppressor. And then also, this also represents how media plays a major role and why, yes, um, everything has a play, right? Has a place. And what I mean by that is representation, performance, symbolism it has a role in all of this. And it does matter. It is an important piece because, again, people didn't see, everybody sees God as, again, the fact is this, God is technically a spirit, not a person, not a thing. So the fact that we are assuming that it, it, it's gonna be white or it's gonna be a man in itself is ignorant because God is a spirit, place, not a thing, not an actual being, right? Like I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm just saying, okay, so, uh, but again, nobody, when we think about it, we think about the pearly gates. A lot of people think God is a white man. A lot of people think Jesus is a white man and it's the pearly gates and boom, boom, boom. Again, representation. So when you have media constantly showing that, they're sh telling everybody that um, black folks, you, I don't even think y'all going to have it. Mm -mm, y'all sinful. Y'all got a curse. I'm not even going to be here. Mm -mm. Because again, that's not my idea of paradise. Okay. Like, think about it. All right, so how could the good and merciful Lord be black? He's a white man with bright pink cheeks. From black to white, that is the way to go. One is white, so one is rich. So one is handsome, so one is intelligent. Page 34, this has to be brought up because I remember growing up, my granny told me a lot of things about shit that they heard and there was like little jingles and quotes and sayings that they would say back then, you know? If you're white, you're all right. If you're yellow, you're mellow. If you're brown, stick around. If you're black, get back. That was literally the shit that they would say. So in other words, if you're white, you're okay. You're righteous, you're good. You're gonna get on with life. If you're yellow, and again, racism, white supremacy. You're Asian, you're Chinese, right? You're Japanese, you're, you know, you're Pacific Islander, you're South Asian etc. If you're yellow, you're mellow. Because the idea is Asians are seen as being the model minority. That is the stereotype uh, of that. And then if you're brown, stick around. So again, when you get back into not only racism, but the colorism aspects, if you're brown, stick around. So if you're Hispanic, Latino, you're Mexican, you're Cuban, you're Dominican, you're Puerto Rican, you're Colombian, you're Salvadorian, you know, you're Venezuelan, Panamanian, etc. If you're brown, stick around. So like, and then you get deeper into the colorism aspect. There's this idea, especially back in the day, and even now the shit is still happening. If you were the color of a brown paper bag, you were okay, right? So if you're brown, stick around. There's hope for you. You too might be able to become a minority, a model minority. Like if you're yellow, stay mellow, but you will never be white. <laughs> and if you're black, get the back. So again, your dark skin, the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice, oddly enough, um, factually, right? But if you're black, get back. So you don't even have any hope, any chances of ever getting. So these were the sayings, man. These were the, this is in 1952. He's talking about France. My granny was in USA, Jim Crow, Arkansas. My grandfather was in USA, Jim Crow, Mississippi. So I just wanna, you know, you gotta look at the combat, you gotta look at the, the, the similarities, differences, and seeing how this is a global issue of oppression.